Hey guys, how's it going? So it's a really windy day today, but I have a gardening project that can't wait. It's something that I have to do, and I'm hoping, I'm wearing a microphone underneath my sweater, so I'm hoping the audio is okay for you guys. Um, but I'm sitting here on the west side of the house, and you can see there's an AC unit right here. We've got a limelight hydrangea standard, a little fern right below it, and then a blue kazoo spirea that I planted a couple of years ago in this space and I need to transplant those to another area in our garden because we are getting another unit put in and it needs to sit right here. Um, so this unit controls the AC on the upper level of the old side of the house. We have no AC in the first floor of the old side of the house. So it's incredibly hard to regulate. We've got, well, we'll have three different AC units all together because this whole thing has been kind of pieced together throughout the years as addition, the addition was made on the house. Um, and so anyway, we're trying to get everything as efficient as possible inside because it costs a lot to heat and cool our house and we just want to get that cost down if we can. So the company that actually moved our AC unit that's down the way, that was right in front of the house, they're coming in the next week or so. We just don't know what day to install the new one so that we're ready to go, go come next year. So anyway, I just have to get out and get this done. Let me give you a little look at the area. So this is the space right here, which you guys, this entire area, let me flip around. This entire area is gonna be different next year. We're taking out the walkway and the grass. I'm redesigning this whole space to hopefully mask that unit and then also mask all this business that's going on right here. So there are five irrigation boxes right here. This is where the water comes into our house. So of course it's like the hub for everything going on around out here. Um, that's our little well house. And then we've got the AC unit for upstairs. I put this Japanese maple in a container here to kind of hide all the boxes. We can paint these. I just haven't got around to it yet. Uh, and I'm actually thinking these plants are going to be a lot happier because I'm going to move them into more sun. I thought this spot got a lot more sun than it actually does. I mean, you can see like the limelight, it bloomed, um, but it doesn't get as full and thick as my others. And the blue kazoo um, has kind of spread out and it does okay, but I think it'll, it'll just do so much better in another location. So here's the deal. This time of year is not the best time of year to be transplanting things, but I wanted to show you this because this is real life. This is what happens when you have work done on your house or whatever, you know, sometimes you just have to, have to do it. I either need to dig these up and get rid of them or dig them up and move them to another spot and hopefully they take off in the spring. Um, so the best time to transplant things are of course in the early spring, kind of before things break dormancy so that they can break dormancy and wake up in their new home or uh, early enough in the fall to where they have a certain amount of weeks, usually like at least six weeks to kind of root in a little bit and establish so that they can get through the winter. Um, so today when I'm transplanting, I'm gonna try to get as much of the root ball as I can so I don't shock the plants. Um, I will still be planting them with the starter fertilizer. I'm gonna mulch them up really well and we'll just hope for the best. So anyway, what I'm gonna do really quick is get these dug up and then I'll show you what the root balls look like. And here are my supplies for it. I've got my shovel out here, my starter fertilizer. I'm gonna break into a new pair of gloves for today. It's always an exciting day when we can start a brand new pair. I've got a part bag of mulch and then my kneeling pad. Whew, my hands are frozen already. My word, I was dealing with a lot of irrigation lines. <laughs> Look at this area. Like what in the world? There's one here. This is one of the old drip tubes. I think it's still live though. This is one I put in. And then I had extra water going to the hydrangeas. So I'm gonna have to fix that. This is the line that runs around the house and then feeds all of our window boxes on the other side of the house. And then there's something right here that ends, I have no idea. And that's why it's so important to take pictures of areas after you've just run your drip tubing before you mulch on top so that you know where everything's at. And I do think I took a picture of this area. I'm just gonna have to go back and take a look before I start planting stuff. Um, so as I was digging these things out, I realized that the blue kazoo probably didn't need to be moved in terms of like being in the way of the new unit. But like I said, I think it'll be happier in a sunnier spot anyway. So I just went ahead and did it. So let me show you what the three plants look like. There's the limelight right there. It actually didn't have a super extensive root system yet. Um, and I, I gotta get this one planted quickly. I don't wanna leave this out in the wind. 
The fern came out really easily. Um, that one I planted this last spring, so of course it was pretty contained as well. The blue kazoo came out beautifully. Um, so I think I got most of its root system, so this one should be fine. The first one I'm gonna replant real quick is the fern because it's just gonna be going right here. There's a lot of the same kind of fern right here. So I've got a little hole where I had a pansy that's not looking super hot. Anyway, I'll put it right in here um, to kind of fill in that gap. I had white wonder caladiums and white pansies in here along with the ferns this last fall and it was just so beautiful. All right, this first one is gonna be easy. I don't have to dig much of a hole at all. Oh, there's another irrigation line. Jeez Louise. All right, so the fern is watered in and mulched and I think it's gonna do pretty well there. So now I've gotta find a spot for these other two and I honestly haven't even decided where I wanna put them, but I'm sure we'll find a good location. I did wanna mention that our nighttime temperatures right now are hovering somewhere in the high 20s. In about a week, it's supposed to be in the teens. So I just wanted to give you an idea as to what I'm dealing with in terms of temperature. And we haven't had any uh, good rain for a couple of months and our irrigation system has blown out, been blown out for about a month. Um, so we're hand watering stuff and taking hoses around to keep everything moist because we get a lot of wind and not a lot of moisture. So anyway, that's what we're doing over here. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna load these guys up and we'll just kind of wheel around and find a good spot for them. So I was thinking I could pop them out over here on the west side and I'm so sad because I just noticed that I've got a fresh new gopher mound and look what they've done. Look at my, my roses. All but one root. Look at this. The gophers just eat out the entire root system of my roses. That's what they like the best. This is Lady of Shalott. I planted three of them out here. They already got the one that was there earlier on. And apparently they just got this one and this one. There's its hole. And there's the gopher run. My hand can go down in it. Oh, I'm so irritated at those gophers right now. I had the same problem in our last garden because our yard backed up to a pasture and the gophers would come in and I had a ton of roses and they always ate the roots for my roses. They left pretty much everything else alone, but my roses always got nailed. And these were pretty big too, so I'm totally bummed out. Oh well, I guess there are more roses we can plant. I'll put the blue kazoo probably right here in this area because I've already got a nice hole started for me. I am gonna run and grab some repellent. Um, you know, I think it's the Mole Max that we tried out in the uh, yard where, by our Hebe fountain and it worked really well. I haven't seen any new gopher mounds over there since we applied that. We did it three times. Um, so I think I'm gonna start doing that over here because I don't want them to keep eating my plants. All right, just kidding. I was gonna plant it over here and then I decided that because the blue kazoo has a lot of blue in its leaf color, I don't really want it so close to my weeping blue spruce. So I'm gonna swing around and plant it over here near the green spruce. I think right about in here. They grow about two to three feet tall and wide. So I kind of think it'll be pretty right by that pathway. think that this is the perfect plant for this location and I know it doesn't look prime now but you guys just wait it will look amazing next spring so long as it doesn't die from my late transplant <laughs> this is not the day for projects <laughs> this is the day for ponytail holders oh. so real quick I did want to mention a couple of things about this plant because hold on hold on look it <laughs> okay stay here stay cart biotone's not just good for fertilizing 
So these are a zone three through eight, so extremely winter hardy. And like I said, they grow two to three feet tall and wide. So they're really easy to tuck in pretty much anywhere because they don't get enormous. And you really wanna put them somewhere where they can grow to their full size because they bloom on old wood, um, which means you don't really want to be pruning those types of shrubs ever, if at all possible. Um, and they bloom in late spring, early summer with really big clusters of white blooms, which will fit in really beautifully with this new garden over here. Um, what else? I just, I don't know. I just have always really liked the way that this one looks. Not right now, particularly, but when it has leaves and, you know, all that stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna plant the limelight hydrangea standard really nearby, right in front of me, in fact. So I'm thinking, like the birch is gonna get bigger, obviously, the arborvitas will get bigger. These are the ones that I decided to plant later. Um, you know, they'll need a little while before they catch up with the others. But I'm thinking it might look really pretty to have a lollipop hydrangea right in here. So this area is most definitely full sun, but it happens to be one of the more moist areas on our property. I put a lot of drip tubing in this space when we initially kind of planned it out. Um, so it stays fairly saturated, which will be really good for the hydrangeas. Um, you know, we have a really dry, harsh growing environment here. And typically if you were just to put a hydrangea somewhere and not give it any extra supplemental water, they typically will fry. Um, but we've been really pushing, especially the hydrangea paniculatas, um, and arborescens like the Incredible and Limelights and Limetas over the past few years in full sun locations and they do really well so long as they get enough water. So I'm thinking that this hydrangea will do really well in this spot. And also, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm like super scattered because it's so windy, it's like throwing me off. Um, but the Biotone, I am still using that just because the root systems don't go completely dormant in the winter. They'll still be working a little bit and I wanna give these plants the best start I can just because I'm disrupting you know their system so much by transplanting so late um, but I feel like as long as you do your starter fertilizer keep them moist make sure you know they don't blow over in the wind like they might today I'm gonna have to probably stake up my tree here um, I think we'll be okay come spring so anyway I'm gonna get this last one planted so I can go inside Jeez. No wonder this hole was so hard to dig. I just ran into a great big root from an old tree. I need to go grab the saw. I need to grab the gopher repellent as well. So we'll head to the barn. Oh, please don't be out. Please don't be out of it. I looked everywhere and I think I'm out of the repels all. So I'm gonna have to run down to the garden center and grab some in a little bit. But I did get my saw, so we'll get the root cut and at least I'll get everything in the ground, which that's the main goal for this project anyway. <laughs> that beast. That's a big old root. There it is. I think it looks excellent in that spot. It was kind of the perfect thing, the perfect structure too because I have a lot of um, upward, like straight growing things and I needed something with a little bit more weight down below. So the blue kazoo spirea and the limelight have really brought that to this spot. And I do have the instant karma elderberry planted here, which looks so sad right now. And I have another one planted down there. And then while we're down here, we can take a look at the winterberry hollies because they are still looking really great. They've got some nice color on them. So there's one there, here, and there. So now I'm gonna have to figure out something new for this area where I had my roses. What a big bummer. There they are. Oh. So that is gonna be it for today's project. I'm just really happy I got it done. And I know like the timing is not great, um, but this is real life gardening. Sometimes you're up against it and you have to do things when things like it's not the right timing. Um, so I just wanted to show you my process and I'm really hopeful that all of these will do really well um, and they'll take off in the spring and just go for it. I just think the most important things to do are to remember to fertilize like you normally would when you're planting things and then keep things moist. So because it's so windy and dry, I'll probably be out here every few days just making sure that they're not completely dried out. Um, and then hopefully once we get a little bit of snow, I can relax a little bit on it. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.